Now let's convince people listening and watching to throw away their antiseptic mouthwash. Why? <laughs> why? What's the issue with uh, using mouthwash, Amy? Oh, I love talking about mouthwash, as you know. Um, so the issue with mouthwash is that it kills our antiseptic mouthwash. You can, there are some sort of do-it-yourself blends that you can do, but the like Listerine, it kills your bacteria in your mouth. So it, you know, just kind of wipes out your entire oral microbiome. And the issue with that is, primarily the one I'm concerned about is that it prevents you from being able to make nitric oxide from food. So one of the sort of, there's two ways of sort of creating nitric oxide in your body. One of them happens inside your blood vessels. And that's something that's, that's happening, you know, as you, without even thinking about it, um, as, as long as you're young enough and you have healthy blood vessels. Um, as we get older, we lose the ability to make nitric oxide in our blood vessels because we start to get um, atherosclerosis and plaque buildup and you get endothelial dysfunction, which means those cells don't work very well. So you stop, that pathway becomes a little bit less reliable. But the other pathway, which is that we could take in foods that are high in nitrates, like, like uh, especially vegetables and, and fruits that are high in nitrates, like, like beets and uh, spinach and arugula and things like that. You take those foods in and your body can make nitric oxide from food. However, you need healthy, you need sort of healthy bacteria, uh, nitrate reducing bacteria in your mouth to complete that first step. So if you don't have the bacteria because you've killed them with the, with the uh, mouthwash, then you don't have the first step that, that is able to make nitric oxide. Also, by the way, you need uh, stomach acid to, to do the second step. So there's two steps and you need stomach acid. So a lot of people are taking stomach acid reducing medications, especially the proton pump inhibitors, the PPIs, uh, like Nexium and Prevacid and things like this, which are available over the counter now, which I think is kind of crazy. Yep. Those medications are so bad for you uh, long-term. They were never meant to be taken long-term. And um, they essentially prevent you from being able to make nitric oxide from food. And so the, the number of side effects uh, long-term with those medications is, is, is astounding. Um, so don't take those either. Yeah, I hope that convinces people. I, I took, I used to use Listerine for, for many, many years before I figured out how dangerous it was. And, and you know, as you know, of course, and you teach, nitric oxide is very important for sexual health and erections. I mean, that's kind of how Viagra works. It just, it makes, how does it, Viagra work? It makes nitric oxide a little bit more available, right? It makes it stick around longer. Yeah, it yeah. essentially kind of prevents the breakdown of nitric oxide um, for a period of time. So by that explanation, I would venture to guess that if you're taking, if you're using uh, antiseptic mouthwash and you're taking some sort of antacid every day, it will decrease your sexual function. Is that a fair uh, hypothesis to say? I think it's fair. There actually are studies, uh, uh, some at least case reports and small studies that have looked at the PPIs, the acid blockers, and erectile dysfunction. There are a number of reports of even young people, you know, people in their 30s who start taking PPIs and all of a sudden they, they like lose their ability to have erections. And that's less common in young people because again, you can still make it through the other pathway um, until you get older, but it does, it does happen. So I think that those are both bad for your sexual function for sure.